Greetings to everyone from around the world. This is a Sunday sermon recording from Father Mike of Our Lady of the Hills Parish here in Southwest Ohio. I am your host, Ishmael Ali, and here is Father Mike's sermon. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep <coughs> aren't his own, he sees a wolf coming and he leaves the sheep, runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters the sheep. This is because he works for pay. He has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must leave, and they will hear my voice, and there will be but one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it, take it up again. This command I've received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a true story about a sermon, and this sermon will live in the annals of preaching history. There was this young deacon, not me, it was another person, a young deacon studying for the priesthood, and he was required to preach a sermon about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And he worked for days on this sermon to make it so memorable no one would ever forget it. Before stepping to the podium, he went back into the sacristy. Now that, that's the sacristy. And he went back there and people wondered, well, what is he doing? And then the deacon reappeared in the sanctuary. This is the sanctuary. And he reappeared with something that took the congregation by surprise to punctuate his message. He came out hoisting a live lamb wrapped on his shoulders. You know the type that go, ah, 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 like that? Yeah, Callum like that. <laughs> he had it on his shoulders and around his neck. You know that famous Jesus picture, the Good Shepherd? That's what he was trying to imitate, Joseph. So he had this live lamb wrapped around his shoulder, just like Jesus. The congregation did not know what to think. They never saw anything like this before. <laughs> well, the deacon began to preach the message that Jesus holds us, just like I'm holding this docile lamb on my shoulders. And the deacon was energized by the captive audience, hanging on his every word. Sadly, his euphoria turned to dread. The little lamb become, became undocile. The deacon did not consider that like a little baby, when it's time to go, you go. That lamb dumped all over him, dumped all over the sanctuary where he was preaching. The congregation froze. They did not know what to do. But courageously, that deacon he kept preaching with a smelly little critter still hanging on his shoulders. The deacon got his wish. No one ever forgot this sermon. <laughs> in fact, this sermon was preached in the early 70s. That's over 50 years, so we're still talking about it. And it is no surprise that no one took communion from the deacon that day. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, during my 40 years as, as hospital chaplain, you know, cumulative 40 years, I have seen God get dumped on. I do believe that, like that picture of Jesus and the Good Shepherd, that he picks, up, picks you up, picks us up, picks me up when life knocks us, knocks us down. He picks us up spiritually. He places us close to him. And God places you around his loving, caring shoulders. Yet, that doesn't stop some believers from dumping on God. They dump on God their anger, their bitterness, because they or someone else they love is sick. I dealt with this, I call anger dumping on God for many years at Children's Hospital. These parents, when they would learn a terrible diagnosis, they became angry, and that anger was so intense and so, so real and so palpable. I couldn't blame them. And the anger always showed itself in this one question. Why? Why? God, why does my innocent <coughs> child have to suffer this terrible disease? I never tried to answer that question because there is no human answer to the question why. There is none. Only God knows. There's a beautiful message from the great tennis star, Arthur Ashe. Do you remember Arthur Ashe? Did, like anybody here don't know who he is? Raise your hand. Oh, so you all know who he is, okay. Or for those of you who are too chicken to raise their hands, <laughs> I will tell you who he is to remind you. Arthur Ashe was a great tennis player in the late 70s. And Arthur Ashe, of any person that I would know, he had every reason to ask God why. Here he was, the first African-American to win the singles title at Wimbledon in tennis. He was like number one in the world. Everything was going great for him. Fame and money and, you know, man, he had the world in the palm of his hand. But then in 1983, a few short years later, he was dying from AIDS. He got AIDS from, a, from tainted blood. See, back then, they didn't screen for HIV. And he had to have a heart surgery. And they gave him a transfusion. And in that transfusion was HIV virus. And he got AIDS. And it killed him. During this time, though, he received many letters of support from fans. This one question from one fan haunted him. Why did God let you have such a bad disease? And Arthur Ashe, he knew he had to answer it. And here was his reply. Five million children learned to play tennis around the world. 500,000 learned to play professional tennis. 50,000 joined the tour. 5,000 reached the Grand Slam. 50 reached Wimbledon. Four reached the semifinals, and two reached the finals. And when I was holding the victory cup, the victory cup of winning, the one who won at Wilmington or Wimbledon, I had it in my hand. And I never asked God, why me? Now that I'm in pain, I have no need to ask God, why me? I am blessed either way. Well, that's a lot of faith to say that I am blessed either way. I have learned in my 10 years as a counselor in AA at the care unit in Glenmore Avenue. I brought a lot of people to recovery, helped them to see it at least. But I've learned something from AA. This one thing I learned for sure, you must take life on life's terms and find the blessing in everything. A parishioner wrote to me this gem of wisdom. 
A child on a farm sees a plane in the sky and he wishes he could fly. A pilot on the plane sees the farmhouse on the land and wishes he could go home. It's perspective. You've got to see the blessing, whether you're up here or whether you're down there. There's blessing in those two places, good and the bad. And all along the way, God gives us blessing. <coughs> when angry parents at the children's hospital would ask me why, I would respond gently by saying it's the wrong question. You're asking the wrong question. You will never get an answer to the why. Instead, ask what? God, what will you do to help my child? What will you do to help me and my family? What will you do? That's a legitimate question. Because there you're calling upon God to, be, to give you grace, which is his love in action. You're calling on God to help you. So get rid of the why. It'll just leave you angry. Ask what? That leaves you hopeful. And then you forge ahead with faith. You forge in life with faith that God has given you as a blessing. Well, there's a postscript. The deacon of our story became a very beloved priest in 1977. He got ordained. And guess what he was known for? Preaching. He became a national preacher, and he went around the, com uh, the country. He gave retreats all around the country. Sadly, he passed away to heaven in 2001 at the very young age of 50 due to stomach cancer. Some may ask, why? Why would God take this good priest? He probably would answer, why not? God carried me on his shoulders to paradise. I am blessed. And blessings to you. Amen. One little proscript, uh, another one. I concluded this sermon in the last Mass by saying, life is crazy. Isn't it crazy? Life is very crazy. It doesn't make sense a lot of times. And so I, I was saying that, how life's crazy. Then I told the people the story where, you know, on my hearing aid, there's little domes on the end. I got two of them stuck in my ear. Not one, but two. I had to go to Dr. Beery. He had to use a water pick. And he said, here's the one. Oh, you got another one too. Who knows how long that been in there? He says, you just gave birth to twins through your, <laughs> through your ear, through your ear. He called it an E-section. <laughs> so I was talking about that. We were laughing. Why well, go on with the mass? And here, there's this big commotion over there. And little Frankie, to me, it seemed like he had a seizure. And he fell down. And and they had to tend to him. Uh, the, I just talked to, Ma, uh, to the uh, stepmother. Uh, he's okay. He's okay. He's back to normal. But boy, it was scary. He looked white, ashen. He could barely walk. They had to carry him out of church. So I thought to myself, yeah, life is crazy. But God, I really didn't want a demonstration. <laughs> you know? It was scary. Michelle, you know, we were scared. We didn't know what was going on, but he's okay. Life is crazy, folks, so I'm going to tell you this last thought. When life is crazy, you got to go to God. That's, sometimes that's the only thing you can do because there's so many times in life you're powerless. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to fix it, and you can't. You go to God. Let him take care of it. Amen. Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This recording of Father Mike's sermon was produced and edited by me, Ish Ali. The intro music is Amazing Grace. 
sung by La Grave Avenue CRC of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you to Father Mike for a great sermon. Previous recordings of Father Mike's sermons can be found at stmaryhillsborough.org. That's S-A-I-N-T, maryhillsborough.org, and on the St. Mary Hillsborough YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this program, please donate and help sponsor future sermon recordings. You can send checks to St. Mary Catholic Church, 212 South High Street, Hillsboro, Ohio, 45133. All donations are tax deductible and greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening.